Case number three is from a 13 year old male. Here we have a lytic lesion in the distal femur metaphysis. The lesion is lytic, meaning dark or black, but it has a sclerotic, meaning this white line uh, edge to it, which corresponds to new bone formation. And you could literally draw a line completely around this mass, so it's circumscribed. And what this white line is telling us, this sclerotic edge is telling us that this mass is growing, but the body has enough time to build up a barrier to it with new bone formation. So that's telling us that it's a slow growing indolent process, likely benign. Um, and you'd also notice that this mass is eccentric, meaning it's to the side. It's not in the middle of the bone. It's centered in the medullary cavity, but it's kind of scalloping the cortex. And finally, um, you'll notice that the patient is skeletally immature and that there's an open growth plate. So tissue was obtained. And here we have a uh, low power, low to intermediate power lobular architecture uh, with these hypocellular uh, areas with condensation around the edges uh, in this really kind of prominent lobular pattern, which is a real helpful clue to this diagnosis. Um, the background stroma is chondromyxoid, meaning blue and um, somewhat uh, fibrous, meaning pink, uh, but the, the really interesting pattern here is it's kind of low power architecture of this lobular pattern here in this macro lobular pattern. Um, on the right, um, we see kind of more of the same, this lobular pattern with this uh, central hypocellularity. And then in between the lobules, it's more cellular. Uh, at this um, low to intermediate, intermediate power, we can see that the cells are uh, relatively bland. Um, some admixed giant cells throughout, uh, but then it's a uh, chondromyxoid background stroma. And higher power view, these cells are quite bland, are spindle to ovoid, somewhat polyhedral shape. And here, this uh, pattern here is kind of a little bit more of a micro lobular. So that these little lobules here are kind of a little bit smaller than the more macro lobular pattern uh, from before, but this is our view at uh, higher power. No cytologic atypia is identified. And on the right, we confirm that with these uh, real bland um, polyhedral to spindle, somewhat stellate shaped cells in this background chondromyxoid stroma. So taken together with the radiographs and the histology, this is a chondromyxoid fibroma, which is a rare and benign cartilage tumor. It's one of my favorite tumors, actually. Um, and it, it often occurs in young adults. The majority of patients are younger than age 40, typically uh, developing in long bones, most often in the medullary cavity. However, the uh, chondromyxoid fibroma may occur um, in the cortex of a bone. It's often in the metaphysis and typically eccentric, meaning towards one side. A subset of chondromyxoid fibromas may occur in the pelvic bones, the head and neck, feet, or in the spine. Uh, radiogra radiographically, this is a well-defined lytic lesion, cortical thinning and expansion, uh, which certainly raises a radiographic differential diagnosis of the non-ossifying fibroma, which we just discussed in case two. Histologically, chondromyxoid fibroma has a really distinctive low power lobular architecture. This chondromyxoid matrix with these spindle to stellate cells Sometimes they are a little bit more plump and polyhedral resembling chondroblasts. The peripheral condensation with this central hypocellularity should allow you to identify this lobular architecture. Again, to remember to, to stay at low power for this tumor. There is a um, often an admixture of giant cells um, in addition to this, um, the bland spindle cells. Um, molecularly, it's been identified to have a GRM1 gene rearrangement uh, with uh, downstream upregulation on chromosome six. Treatment is curatage, but it's important to note that local recurrences may occur in 20% of cases. Uh, and differential diagnosis histologically may lead you to 
various chondrosarcomas or the bland architecture, virus dysplasia perhaps, kind of dependent upon the sample. But uh, always remember to keep the radiographs um, in mind when interpreting a bone tumor.